Hi folks, sometimes when using TinyCAD you may need a specific component for your diagram that is not included in the built-in libraries that come with TinyCAD. In this case, you may need to draw that component yourself. The good news is that it's not too difficult once you get the hang of it. In this video we will make a few different custom components. I recommend trying to follow along yourself as it will help you to remember the process. Let's start with something simple, like a voltmeter. First we need to create a new library. Click on Library at the top of the screen and then select Libraries. Here we can see all the different libraries that come installed with TinyCAD. And as you can see, they are all located inside a folder called Library inside the TinyCAD folder. The TinyCAD folder is stored in your Documents folder. We could edit an existing library to add our own components to it, but it might be easier to keep track of all our own custom parts if we keep them in a new library. So to do that, all we have to do is click on New, and then we just type in the name of our library. So in this case, I'm going to call it uh, Custom Stuff. And uh, once it's saved in the library folder, it should be fine. Once we've saved it, all we have to do is find it in the list of different uh, libraries. And here it is here, custom stuff. So then once we want to start putting components into it, all we have to do is click edit. And here we go, here's our library. Not a lot to see because we haven't added any components into it yet. The editing screen will have changed a little, and if you look at the menu at the top, you will see a new menu item called Symbol. Click this and select a New Symbol. You can also right-click on the drawing area and select New Symbol like this. So you can select New Symbol this way, or you can select Symbol up here and select New Symbol. We now have a drawing area similar to the one we use when drawing a normal circuit diagram. However, the Add Symbol Pin button is now available, which is this one here. Before going any further, go to the Options, then Settings, and set Normal Grid Spacing. This makes it easier to get everything to align properly. We can always change the grid to Fine when we want to adjust the positioning of some items. Also make sure that Snap to Grid is selected. Then make sure to click OK. OK, next we're going to click on the Add Symbol Pin. And this allows us to put in the pins uh, for the symbol that we're going to create. So a um, voltmeter usually has two connectors on it. So I'm going to put in pin one. I'm going to put in pin two. Now I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so we can see the grid. And the next thing I'm going to do is click on the arrow. Then I'm going to click on each of the specific pins. And then we can just align them the way we want. So this one is going to go this way. And the other one over here is going to go the other way. Next, we're going to draw a circle. So we'll just click on the circle. And then we want to make it about this big. That should do OK. Then I'm just going to move it down a little bit. And then we want to bring our pins to join onto it. I'll take this pin and I'll just drag it along here. And take this pin and drag it along here. Okay, that doesn't look quite right, but we can fix that. All we have to do is just select the uh, pins and just change the length a little bit. Set them to 20. And then we should be able to move them. I'll just set this one to 20 as well. And move it out here. Okay, now they line up properly with the sides. The next thing we're going to do then is to draw the uh, V for voltmeter. So to do this, I'm just going to use the polygon tool. And I'm going to click where I want to start. And then drag down here. And then click and then drag back up to here. Once I'm finished drawing the V, I need to right click and select Finish Polygon. Okay, and then you can see here that we've got a V. 
Um, you might be tempted to use text, but I found myself when using text that when you're realigning the symbol, depending on what direction you want it to go in, sometimes the text doesn't line up correctly. So I just drew in the V instead. Next, we want to put in the um, plus and minus symbols for the voltmeter. So these are a little bit smaller. The grid doesn't really uh, show very well here. So what I'm going to do is go to Options and then Settings. And then I'm going to use User Set Grid Spacing. And I'm going to change that to 2 and click OK. And then when I zoom in close enough, you can see a much finer grid. So next I'm going to use the Polygon tool again. And I'm just going to do a plus. And then I have to finish Polygon. And what I need to do with this as well is right click it and then go to Z order and bring to front so it doesn't get stuck behind the circle. Then I'm going to do another one. So I'm going to click on Polygon tool again. I'm going to go over here, click this one, and click here, and then right click and finish Polygon. And again, right click it, go to Z order and bring to front. Then over on the right hand side, we're going to do the minus symbol. So just click on the polygon tool again, count in the same distance. So one, two, and then about the same across. Finish polygon and right click and the order bring to front. Now let's see how that looks when we zoom out. So if we zoom out, Looks okay when it's small, still looks okay. It looks slightly off here on the right hand side. So I'm going to just move the little symbols a little bit. So to do that, just click on the arrow tool, select the item. And you notice that the whole circle moves. So we have to be careful. What we can do here is we can move this for a second. Then click this and then we can move it a little bit. Have to be careful not to stretch it. And then click this one. Bring it in a little bit. And click this one. Bring it in a little bit. And then bring our circle back up. Okay, that's it. For this particular symbol, we don't really need to have the um, pin numbers. So I'm going to click on the pin. And then I'm going to just turn off the number. And the same with the other one. Click here, turn off the number. Once we're happy with our symbol, we can just go over to File and Save. So the Update Library Symbol dialog box comes up. So at this point, uh, what we should do is just give the symbol a name. So I'm going to click in here and I'm going to call it voltmeter. And then the description, the simple voltmeter. Click on store. We should now be able to close down the symbol. And we can see it here now in our library old voltmeter and here's the symbol itself. So we can close the library and if we look over here on the left hand side we should be able to find the library that we created and it's down here custom stuff. So if we click on the plus you can see it and it appears here. So if we wanted to create a new drawing all we have to do is click our voltmeter and then we can place it into our drawing. If you want, you can also move the uh, text to go wherever you want it to go. Um, or if you don't want to show the text, you can always turn off the reference. Just put voltmeter there. If we want to be able to turn the voltmeter, we should be able to select different options like down, left, right, and it should stay pretty much correct. Sometimes you may just want to move the text around the place. That's about it. Okay, so let's uh, create something a little bit more complex. This time we're going to go 
and we're going to we'll go to libraries and we're going to go to custom stuff the one we created earlier we're going to go to edit and so we have our one component but we're going to do a new one so we just right click and go new symbol and we'll just go up to options and settings and we'll just make sure the grid is set to normal grid spacing and it is so we click ok and then we can do our new symbol which is going to have uh, eight pins because it's a 555 timer so for that we click on our pins and we just start just start putting the pins in so one two three four Seven, eight. It doesn't really matter where we put them for the moment because we're going to be moving them around anyway. Next, we need to draw a box. So we'll just click on the rectangle shape there and we'll just start about here. And we'll just make it a rough size. We don't know exactly how big it's going to be yet. Something like this. Now, an actual 555 timer looks a bit like this. But Often when you're drawing logic diagrams, they don't necessarily uh, match up the pins that way. So it tends to be whichever way the pins work best in the diagram that they're stuck on. So uh, in this case, we're going to be doing it a little bit different. Okay, so pin 8 and pin 4 are going to go on the top. And pin 5, 6, and 2 are going to go on the left-hand side. And pin 3 and 7 are going to go on the right-hand side. And pin one is going to go on the bottom. Okay, let's start with the top two pins. So pin eight needs to be flipped around. So I'll just go down. And then pin four needs also to be flipped around. So we'll go down as well. Uh, but pin four is actually an active low input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to shape and select dot. That just that circle there just represents active low. Next, we'll take pin 5, and we'll just set them to right. Same with pin 6 to right, and pin 2 to right. And pin 3 to left, and 7 to left. And we're just going to move them into place. And then finally, pin 1, just go up here. I think we can shrink this a little bit because it's a little bit big. So I'm just going to shrink it by a couple of squares there. Move everything up one. Up two. Next, we just need to put in the labels. To do that, just click on each of the pins. So pin eight is VCC. So just click on the name area. Pin four, reset. Pin five, CV, six, threshold, Pin two, trigger. Pin three, output. And pin seven, discharge. Finally, pin one, ground. And we're done chip is probably still a little bit big so just to make it smaller I'm just going to shrink it a bit 
and just move everything there we go don't forget to save your symbol so file and save and so the name go in here 555 timer and just a timer and store okay so let's just close that one down and you can see now we have two different symbols in our library so there's one more symbol we're going to do and that one looks like this okay this is what a 7408 uh, quad dual input and gate looks like so in this particular example we're going to try and make it look a bit like this uh, so it actually matches the configuration of the chip rather than a logical diagram so let's right click again and go new symbol and now I'm just going to check to make sure my settings of normal grid spacing which is okay i'm just going to zoom in a bit so i can see the grid and then we're going to draw a rectangle so click on the rectangle and i'm going to make it let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten twelve thirteen fourteen roughly and one two three four five six okay i think i've counted that right we'll find out in a minute so the next thing I want to do then is uh, get some pins. So for this, we're going to need 14 pins. Okay, just need to make that a little bigger. Okay, so to go to our pins, let me click here. So 14, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Remember to turn them around to face the right way. So we just click on that, click on the pin and select left or right. So these are right and then the ones over here on the right are gonna be left. Okay, just save a bit of time. I did those uh, in super speed mode. Now next, uh, we want to just do this. So we're gonna click on the um, chip. This is gonna be the chip. And if we go to fill, uh, we just go with a color and just light gray. Okay, and then I'm gonna move these pins so that they join onto the chip. To move them up to do okay okay so we have all our pins in okay so next we want to do uh, things using the arc tool now before I use the arc tool I'm going to change the grid spacing to fine click okay then I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here. So the arc tool works a bit like this. You click on arc, and then depending on which way the arc is going to go, you use arc out or arc in. So I click, and then if I want to draw a kind of a semicircular shape, I can do this. Okay, so I click here, and then I go to arc in, and then I can change the shape around like that. And then I bring it across, then right click and select finish polygon. Next, I'm going to click on my shape, and then I'm going to choose fill. I'm going to choose a darker gray, and then I'm going to right click it, and I'm going to go Z order and bring to front. Then I'm going to rotate right, I'm going to rotate right again. And so that allows me to then bring this here, and it just represents the notch at the end of the chip, usually the one closest to pin number one. Okay, so we're going to use the arc tool again. And this time it's going to be for creating the little AND gates that go inside the chip. So what we want to do is 
create a shape as we were doing before. And we have to select arc in then just to change the direction. And then I'm going to go down, click, go across, click, and then back up, click, and then right click and finish polygon. So what we want to do here is select fill and then choose a color for the fill and we want it to be white. Click OK. Now, what you might find is that the color of the line has changed. So we're just going to change the color of that to black. Click OK. And now we have a shape for our end gate. So there's going to be four of these in the chip. So I'm just going to make a duplicate of this one. So right click it and then select duplicate. Then I'm going to put it over here and then I'm going to rotate it. Rotate right, click again, rotate right. So this is going to be my first gate that I'm going to use. So I'm placing it about here and then what I'm going to do is I am going to draw lines from the pins that it's going to connect to. But I need to make sure that I have control in terms of the grid. And at the moment, if I click on the arrow, the lines and then I click here, it doesn't quite match up where I want it to go. Now I have a couple of options. I could move the uh, end gate but the problem is because it's not on the top it's going to be whenever I try to move anything I end up moving the chip so if I move this first then click here right click and go to Z order into front I should still have a problem moving it right so what I'm going to need to do is just move it away move this in here like this and then try and find somewhere where it's happy Okay, now if I try and do this again, still not going where I want it to. Now if I try to draw a line here, going to the gate, it doesn't really fit where I want it to go. So what I need to do is go into my grid settings and then choose something a bit smaller. So if I set this to five, click OK then I should be able to get it to go pretty much where I want it to go, which is about there. And then I'm going to do the next pin, which is this one, which is going to go there. And then the last one is going to be coming out from here. So it should go from this pin and then just bring it up and it should reach the middle and there we go okay so we have our first uh, of the four AND gates drawn in to do the second one all we need to do is copy all the parts so I'm just going to move this over here for a second and then I'm going to select all of these if I hold down control it will let me select all of the items and then if I press Control C to copy, and then move this back, and Control V to paste, I'll have a second one, which I can place. Next, we need to just put in uh, on pin seven the label ground G and D. That's that one done. And then we want to do the same thing on, over on the other side. We just want to use these gates again, but this time they're going to be facing up the way. So we just need to get our gate and bring it over. To about here. And then we need to connect the inputs to it and outputs. So we just draw our lines again. I 
make sure to press escape unless you want to keep drawing the lines so go here press escape do this one press escape so we can do the trick we did the last time which was to bring over the tip then select these and use control to make sure you select everything. So just hold down control while you click everything. Then press control C on your keyboard to copy. And then just move this back. And then press control V to paste in the new one. There we go. Finally, then we can just put the label on pin 14, such as VCC or VDD, depending on which one you want. And we're pretty much done. So just save the file. So we go to File, Save, give it a name 7408. Quad Q input and gate and click store. There we go. So we close on the library and we've now got our three components in it. All right, let's just uh, test them out. So we close our library, click on new diagram, and then we go to custom stuff and we can try inserting our symbols and uh, yeah they seem to be pretty good okay there you go as always thanks for watching folks hopefully this video was of some use to you if you did like the video perhaps you might give it an old like and maybe uh, subscribe to the channel uh, see you next time